committee for inviting me here. Thank you to the government of India for hosting us, and of course, uh, thank you from uh, to all the organizers for making this happen. I know I am the last intervention for the day. In fact, for the last three few days, and uh, I am between you and freedom, so I'll keep it short. The world may have seen a decline in overall terrorist activities. However, extremist content and calls for violence have reached fever pitch in the virtual world. It is this new landscape of threat incubated on technology platforms that I want to address today. The world may eliminate an Al-Qaeda leader or a Lashkar-e-Taiba operative in counterterrorism operations. Yet, the sanctuary of terror, the countries who are in cahoot with terrorists, Armies that promote jihadi units as their own fighting forces continue to thrive. They are now able to solicit greater funding, attract new support from within the ideologues, and indeed even among hapless netizens. Technology is indeed a force multiplier for these bad actors, and its regulation and availability need serious review, something that has been spoken about. Today I want to share a few thoughts that need wider debate and consequential action on the risks that emanate from our digital lives. In the past, we have seen sponsors of terrorist groups adopt tactical retreat when placed under scrutiny, only to unleash a new generation of barbarism thereafter. We have experienced this in New York and in Mumbai, in Brussels and in Paris. As the world's attention turns to other challenges, state sponsors of terrorism also resume their support. The digital domain has altered this pattern of aggression and retreat. In this new world, even as supporters of terror retreat, the promoters of violence come online and use that opportunity to seek funding, to recruit, and to further the case and the political or their agnostic causes. This two-phase terror landscape is something new that we need to deal with. The persistence and relentlessness of terror is upon us. Between the streets and the digital platforms, terror is now a 24-7 reality. Is our response coping up? Is a big question we need to ask. When all terrorists are in many ways seeking to be defined and, and captured in definitions that are elusive in this council and other places, Social media hashtags are building their own categories. Today, you can take any word, left, right, center, as a prefix, add the word terror to it, and you will have a new cohort identified as a terrorist by some. When all are terrorists, no one is. Armed terrorists dedicated to kill and maim, having networks to destabilize various geographies, slip through the cracks in this superficial debate. The conflation of hate with terror, of petty politics with terror, of populist politics with extremism are creating gray zones which are incubating terrorism and terrorism operations. Woke politics and its binary opposite is also creating a fertile ground for these new cracks that are allowing terrorists to slip through. And then of course we have fake news, misinformation and of course synthetic grievances. Two unmistakable digital trends are working together today and terror groups and those sympathetic to them seem to be setting the agenda. Incidents of crime, aggression and violence are co-opted into terrorist discourse as validation of grievance and justification of their action. These groups set the agenda of the news cycle and mainstream media which is broken for a variety of reasons. Petty crime is now an ideological war and main streets are collateral. Additionally, cleverly crafted reporting and curated facts build synthetic disaffection and victimhood. Gaming of the public sphere also normalizes unacceptable civic behavior. The fringe are at the center of our digital societies that was digital that was uh, impossible to achieve in our real world. Can we regain the center? And finally, we have to deal with dark spaces and gray zones and the restoration of that one single virtue that is required to combat terror in our digital futures, trust. The most important ingredient required to combat terror is missing. It is worth pondering that potentially uncalibrated use of intrusive technology, something that previous speakers spoke about by law enforcement, could lead to complications 
particularly for the social contract and trust between government and citizens. And determination of a large population to permanently shine a torch on counter-terror operations on, on the grey zone conduct of many of these uh, institutions could undermine security as well. We cannot legislate away terror nor write laws that will make it go away. An old-fashioned social compact between government citizens and now online users is urgent. Communities against terror need to be invested into as societies that trust prevail. It is time to rebuild trust in our digital world even as we counter terror offline and online with codes and cavalry. Thank you very much for your time.